Hey everyone, I hope you're all fine. Well, today in this tutorial, I want to review the first part of my NLP kernel on Kaggle and then analyze the data with you and see how we can visualize and also uh, clean the text in this data set. Uh, so for the introduction, I can say that this competition isn't very challenging and you can reach a good score of around 80% if you implement a basic BERT model. And even if you're a beginner, uh, you can follow along and get a good sense of a simple natural language processing task. And you can also understand the basics and most important tools that are available out there. And yeah, so if you want to learn about word embeddings or just want to know about the process of coding the uh, model, you can skip this video and just go ahead and watch the second or third part of the series. Uh, but right now, without further ado, let's just start on the analysis of our data. Well, first of all, let's go to Colab. Uh, in this notebook, in this Colab notebook, we have the exact code that we have in Kaggle, but you can more easily run the code and also experiment with it. So I decided to run the code here instead of uh, in the Kaggle kernel. So yeah, you can follow along with me here, or you can have your own notebook in Colab or Kaggle, whichever you prefer. So for getting started and for the first part of this tutorial, we actually don't need to change our runtime, but when you want to train your model, make sure that you go and change your runtime uh, to GPU because otherwise your model will take a long time to uh, train. Uh, but the first step after that is you have to install libraries like TensorFlow, TensorFlow Hop, and SentencePiece. And these will later on help us with the construction of our BERT model. And after installing all these things in your Colab notebook, just make sure that um, you get the version of 2.3 and 0.9 for TensorFlow and TensorFlow Hop uh, because you know packages get updated so frequently and you may need to add one or two things here and there to you know run the code without any errors. Uh, then after this step, you have to import some packages like NumPy and Pandas for reading the data. Also, things like Spacey and NLTK for cleaning the data and Seaborn and Matplotlib for visualizing it. And at the end, uh, some TensorFlow packages for building the model. And don't worry if you really don't know what things like um, checkpoint are, because we'll go into a lot more detail in the third video and talk about all of these things. So when we're done importing the packages, we have to import our data. Uh, you can actually use my repository on GitHub to import whatever is needed in this competition, like uh, training and testing set, and also a sample of what your submissions should look like when you want to submit your predictions. So go ahead and run this cell in order to import everything. Then after this step, we start analyzing our data. So we'll briefly take a look at the data and see what features each column has and also how many like null values we have in the whole data set. Uh, for that, we'll make another data set by concatenating the training and testing set. And what we're actually doing is that we stack them horizontally onto each other and then reset the index in order to have new indices for every and each um, record. Then here, uh, we're trying to see how many null values we have in every and each uh, column. And also here we can uh, see what percentage of each column is blank by dividing the number of null values in each column by the length of the whole concatenated data set. Okay, so after running the cell, we see that ID and text don't have any null values uh, because ID is unique for every tweet. And a large portion of location is missing, so we have to take a look later and see why that is. Uh, then keyword doesn't have a lot of null values. And hopefully text here doesn't have any null values, so we don't have to drop anything here. 
but we can see that about 30% of um, target is missing or is null. That is because we concatenated the test and training set. Uh, therefore, the 30% that is missing is from the test part. And because this is a relatively clean data set and doesn't have any null values in either uh, text or target, we can conclude that this 30% is totally related to the testing set. So moving on, we fill the null values with no keyword and no location. Then we start visualizing the data we have in each column. So we start with a location field and say group all the tweets by their location and then count each one and see which location was the most common among all of them and was mostly repeated. Then we sort the values in descending order so we can see the most common location uh, that the tweets were generated from. Uh, so after running the cell, this plot will show up and we can see the top 30 locations we uh, have on the data set. And by a large margin, the most common one is no location or blank. And then other tweets are mostly come from places that have English as their first language. And if we look a little bit closer, we can see that we have places like everywhere in this field and that's because these were not automatically generated and were mostly given by users so this is not a very useful column for for prediction or labeling the text due to its subjectivity so we move to the keywords uh, keywords are actually parts of the text that are kind of like the most important word in a sentence that can decide for the label of the text and have an important impact on whether or not this uh, tweet is reporting a disastrous or non-disastrous event. So here, for visualizing the data, we want to separate the disastrous and non-disastrous tweets from each other and then group them by keywords, then see what are the most repeated and kind of my most important keywords that were used in this whole data set. For this plot, I used Seaborn to make two vertically aligned bar plots and the disastrous keywords will have the color of red and non-disastrous ones will have the color of green. Uh, and then here we set the titles and axis tick labels and after running the code, we see the graph below. Uh, a lot of disastrous tweets don't have any keywords as we can see here, but other common keywords are things like outbreak, derailment, and typhoon, and etc. Uh, just pay attention that because our text field isn't clean, the keywords that were generated from this column aren't uh, clean either. So cleaning the text field will be one of the important steps that we have to take in order to classify the text as best as we can. You can go on and explore this field a little bit more on your own and interestingly you can find some keywords that are used in both disastrous and non-disastrous tweets. And also you can generate more features from the text column like the number of punctuations used in the um, tweets, also the number of like URLs or uh, stop words that were used and then visualize them to see how they're different in the disastrous and non-disastrous tweets. Uh, but here, because I want to give you a brief review, I won't go more into the details, but I'll link the other kernel that I wrote on Kaggle uh, that has all the descriptions and you can go and find out so much more about the data and the analysis of it there. But for now, because uh, we will only use the text of tweets to predict the label, we can just go on and drop the other columns like ID and location and also keyword. And also you may wonder why we're dropping ID. Uh, it's because there's no pattern between different values of IDs because they're unique for every and each uh, tweet. So we won't get any specific or uh, useful information out of it. 
Okay, so we move on. And because we said that our text is sloppy and dirty, we have to design one function in order to clean our tweets so we can get the most important words or letters out and then give it to our model in order to predict uh, the label of the text. So for cleaning, I've added both uh, Spacey and NLTK to our environment so you can choose whichever you prefer. And in this function, by using if and elif statements, we can experiment with all of them and then choose the one that gives us the best result. Um, like here, we start by removing the HTTP or HTTPs, and we do that with substituting all the parts of the text that have this format with a blank space. Then, based on the package we want to use, we remove the stop words of the text. Uh, well, just keep in mind that Spacey has more stop words, I guess about 400 stop words in its vocabulary, so it will detect and therefore delete and remove larger parts of your text. And uh, that is why I usually prefer to go with NLTK at first and then use other packages like Spacey and see whether or not removing more hurts the performance of our model and the prediction. Then here we have lemmatization. Uh, what lemmatization actually does is that it takes all the words and then returns the base form of a word. Like if we give it something like tweets, it will return tweet without the S. Or if we give it like crashed, it will give us crash. Uh, then at the end, we delete the punctuations by using translate and then translating all the punctuations and uh, substituting them actually with a blank space. And also we can remove all the extra space that may uh, be around words or letters. So after constructing this function, we want to use it in order to clean all the text. And so we apply it on the text column of our concatenated data set. Uh, well, till now, what we did is that we analyzed the data, then visualized it, and uh, then cleaned it. And what we'll do in the next video is that we'll take a look at word embeddings and see how they work. And at the end, we'll take a look at BERT and how it uses word embeddings in order to classify the text. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this video was useful for you and you got something out of it. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, without further ado, let's get to the next one.